Sean Sport in podcast form. Well, just bringing up the Spring Carnival. It's the last day tomorrow, which is Champions Day. There was really yes. good racing, but I need to breathe out because it's been quite intense. Once you do a lot of homework on the racing and none of it comes through. It's not helping, is it? <laughs> you, just, it's like, you question yourself. Like when you were at school, your homework didn't make any difference, did it? <laughs> yeah, I was speaking to the guy across the road about how Shiraz was the third place getter in the Melbourne Cup. Yes. and. How the hell would you ever pick that? And it was it, never it, mentioned. Like it was no. one. Nobody, nobody no talked one. about it. No. Nobody talked about no, it. No, absolutely not. We're gonna kick things off with women's sport at the moment because there's been a big push in the AFL over the last week, in particular, to name their one of their medals, either the best on ground in the grand final and or the best player of the year, um, under sorry, um, with the. With, named after their greatest player so far, which is Erin Phillips. Yes. Now, Erin is a two-time premiership player, or three-time premiership player, and she's also won the first and best in a couple of seasons playing in the AFLW. Yep. She's been amazing. And she, to she me, has. is the standout person that's played in the competition to this point. I know. So far. How far are you, we? Six Seven. Years? Seven years? Yes. It's early. Yep. So Nicole Livingston, who's the head of the AFLW, um, she had this to say. We hold our pen dry for that at the moment. We're seven years old and eight seasons old. Um, we will take our time to make sure that we honour whomever these uh, awards will be named after. I think that's the right decision. She's not saying they're not going to name it after her, just saying not yet. Maybe a bit of reflection and time. Yeah, absolutely. It always takes a while for them to come up with the names and obviously people have to have done incredible deeds and she has done that. Yeah. And I've got to say, um, with her retirement anyway, um, regardless of the medals being named after her now or in the future, she changed the sport straight away because everybody had to get an idea of what professionalism is like because she came from the WNBA. She played for yeah. Australian She's basketball. She's an extraordinary athlete. Amazing. Made, like She played basketball at the highest level and then switched and came and played AFL. LW to and be the best several times. Amazing. Good yeah. genes. Like her dad was a footy player. Yeah, he was a Port Adelaide champion. Everybody knew yeah. his name. And for her to be able to then lead the Adelaide Crows and join Port Adelaide and captain them in was recent times. Was a dream times. come true for her to, yeah. Yeah, to play for Port. Amazing, yeah, isn't it? That is amazing. So um, good luck to where, whatever way it goes. But to Erin Phillips herself, she's been outstanding. She's so the front runner the at this stage for having the medal named after her. Yeah, no doubt it's about it. It's going to take some beating. You might have seen yesterday that the Guinness Book of Records recognised Laura Enova for her yeah. um, ride of 13 points. Uh, three meters in Hawaii. Now this yeah, took place last year. So this is the size year. of the wave, right? Yep. Yeah, that which is a big wave. So they had to really measure it. The WSL, the World Surfing League, had to really get behind it. They had to go over it and over and over to make sure they got the measurements correctly. Then it has to be lodged. Right. To the Guinness Book of yep. Records. And ratified. And yeah. then it has to be ratified. So thirteen point three meters. So what's the biggest wave you've ever surfed? The point three metres? <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> Actually, I remember last time, the last time we went out to Bali at this mm. one stage, we went out to the airport reef and it was quite, it was a big day, right? And I've got my young son, Oliver, older son, Lachlan, out there with us. So we go there and I'm paddling with Ollie and I'm saying, right, the deep water's over here. We'll stay as close as we are to that point there. So we get cleaned up. You know, there's not far to go to before, sure. before we're safe. And the older son, Lachlan, he just went straight into the Viper pit, so to speak. And, and, and he was in amongst all the uh, the, the great surfers. The fearlessness of massive, youth. <laughs> yeah, that's Was he getting thinking. smashed? He went was he okay. Holding, he hold, held his own. He held his own. It was quite incredible, actually. And th but that's what it comes down to. If you don't know what the danger is, that's right. You're not as fearful. Yeah, that's right. You've anyway, got to not, not think boots. about it. Yeah. yeah Every time he caught a wave, a wave, I was looking out for him. If he got cleaned up, they can. Get, man, they can. When they're coming towards you, these big slabs of water. Yeah. It's scary because it's not. It's not just. It's not like a wall because it's. Walls don't move. You can avoid a wall. Yeah. But it is like the and the movement of the water and what's happening underneath the water. Yeah, most yeah, that's, definitely. That's my experience of surfing anyway. Um. <laughs> On surfing, they're looking at changing the uh, Paris Olympic surfing uh, to Chao Pu. Oh. Which is in French Polynesian. Yes, that's, that's right. It. So technically still France, mm. even though a long way away. So yeah, it's Tahiti, essentially. Yeah. yeah, Tahiti. We'll see if okay. that comes off. Nice. All right. We wait with bated breath. Well, we saw yesterday that Meg Lanning, Australian cricket captain, retired. Joel, you would have picked that up. A snap. I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> there you go. Seven World Cup titles. It's amazing, she won the isn't Belinda it? Clark she Medal be really for the best player three times. She's had an amazing career. Incredible. But do you think that, I don't know, What's she's your still got years about Meg left Lanning? In her. Well, um, I just think her can do attitude. 
That's well said, actually. Well said. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's why she's won seven mm. awards. Whatever they were. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really proud of her. The one thing the Australian cricket team, particularly the women, have been, they've never been on the nose like the men have no, at some stage, true. and no. they've always been... Unbeatable, almost. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. Their record speaks for itself, doesn't it, John? Oh, my gosh. You took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth, Nat. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, no, they're a great, great group of gals. Well, I reckon... <laughs> well, I'm going to change pace here from cricket, just recognising um, Meg, but also moving on to the West Coast Eagles, who still have oh. the number one draft pick. Now, Joel, yes. we're Frio people. Your family are? Uh, yes, yes, I'm a Frio man. Yeah, you have, mm. it's no choice. Well, I, I go for Frio. Um, I go for Richmond because I live in Richmond. Yes, yeah. I go for Adelaide Crows because they sometimes pay me to do corporate events. Yeah. And I go for... Geelong because Eddie Maguire once invited me to a game. And Eddie Maguire invited you to a Geelong game? Oh, sorry, Colling was. <laughs> oh, you were thinking about Daryl Summers when he invited yeah. you to a Geelong oh, game. You yeah, know, Daz, Daz. Geelonging would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, Daz, Nailed like. it. Yeah. North Melbourne is still chasing that number one draft pick and they're not willing to give up. So you West know, Coast have got hits. it and they have said we will we're willing to trade it if you give us a very good offer and so far they've just laughed at the offers they've been given. Well they're not too bad actually that because the first one is that West Coast Eagles hand over the number one draft pick, which is the best player mm. in the Harley Reid, the best player in this country oh, at, at oh, a young yeah. age. And then the West Coast Eagles get two um seventeen and eighteen mm. around that number there, but they want two inside the top ten and then one for next year possible. Mm. I reckon it's gonna happen. So Was because- that maths. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's really sort confusing. Of. God, sort of. sorry, man. So, uh, because the number two pick is going to be uh, Curtin, isn't it? Is that his name? Yes, West, Daniel Curtin. See, see, the thing is, the West Coast Eagles have a high priority of getting him. He's a young guy from Claremont, Joel. But oh, okay. what's, a lot what's of the other teams don't Instagram. have him in the top five Yeah, right, that's to interesting, isn't it? So but as a local player, the too, the, the uh, chances of him oh. sticking around... Oh. Forever are also and being a one club player are also very high. Yeah, so it's it would be advantageous if West Coast get their man, which is Dan Kern from Claremont at three or four, whatever mm. it is, and then they still have a couple in the in the bank mm. inside of you know twelve, and that would be a really big win. You're getting three players for the price mm. of one, and who yeah, doesn't no, love that, a deal? But that oh, one is hot. really is a, they're describing him as a once in a generation player, and if you're sitting there watching him run around for somebody else. That might sting a bit, you know what mm. I mean? Natalie in the yeah. common sense. Nah, mm. yeah. oh. <laughs> Good luck to West well Coast. Said. I think yeah. the fans would like to keep the best player, but other people would so. like to make sure that they're not down the well, bottom for too long. I think perhaps there's there, there, either way is a win. I don't think yeah. there's a bad no, decision. No, no, I don't think yeah. so either. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Tony Modra, who's he playing for? <laughs> Have you done stuff with Tony at Adelaide? Because I know he still gets employed to go down to the Crows. Oh, get out. No, and, and who, who, did in some corp- yeah, he did. Yes, but he also played for Adelaide back in the day. He was the biggest. They, they called him Godra. He was the biggest star oh, in Australia. That's why makes me call him that. Oh. Do you know about the history between Sean and Tony Modra? No, that was just a name I pulled at random. Of all the people you could have brought up. Oh, no. no I'm great, tell Joel what happened. Today. I'm great friends. No, but what happened? I got called into the office at the Freo one day from the chief executive, David Hatt, and he said, hey, mate, I just want to ask you a question. Yeah. Would you be available and would you like to represent Fremantle when the Sydney Olympics come to town and carry the torch down the in main the drag of Fremantle? Like, yeah. I mean, what an opportunity, what an honour. Huge. Okay, huge. so I said, that would be amazing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Went home, told mum and dad, they've asked me to carry the torch and the Fremantle leg. Yeah. Like, this is... this is. They big, rallied this, in yeah. the yeah. still That's living like at a, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 4,000 yeah. 4, people made their way in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So a couple of days before it was happening, because no one had talked to me about it, and I was yeah. just wondering like, what was going on. There was no on. follow-up conversation. Yeah. Previously, two months earlier, Tony Modra arrived from the Adelaide Crows to the Fremantle Dockers. Oh, my gosh. And... <laughs> And they just handballed him. <gasps> they oh, just handballed him the I didn't think torch. to tell you. They didn't tell me. And I did, next thing you know, he's doing the run down the main track. <laughs> and all Sean's family like, hang on, He'd been here for like two Sean. weeks, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sean looks different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I picked that name at random. It was the I only know. football name I could think of. Sorry for... It's he's know, great. I love that. very I triggered. Look at him. I know. No, no, no. Sorry, I know, Sean. Tony. So when he used to train with us also, he, he never used to like to go into the gym because he said he was strong enough. Oh. So what he would do whilst I was training... <laughs> Well, he, well, his thing was that he kicked 13 goals against Stephen Silvani, who was sure. the fullback oh, of the century. Right. So, yeah. you know. But what he used to do, right? So I, I had an old boat and we used to go over to Rottnest Surfing. So he'd go to my house in Burragoon, yeah. near Garden City. <gasps> oh, my God. Yeah, Garbo. And uh, he used to go and get my boat and just st- uh, park in the car park at Fremantle, which is an open car park, and just wait for me to walk out of the gym. He'd be beeping the horn. <laughs> Hurry up. So, we can go. so he would collect your <laughs> he boat. He would do it. Yeah, he'd go. And he'd be sitting there waiting. 
And then we drive off and go, oh, off and go because he's so going. loved his Get, surfing. Oh, Pinky's Beach as well, I imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did some cheeky work there, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> the great Tony Modra. That's a good name. I do well, love Tony. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Thanks I'll think of another random name next time. Yeah, no, okay. no, you nailed it. <laughs> of all the people you could have brought up, was Tony Modra. He's a legend. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.